apologize for being late. Uh, we just stuck in the traffic, and uh, the friends who they are driving, they did their best to uh, drop me on time, but they could not make it. So I apologize again for being late. Uh, I started, at, uh, you know, like uh, two days ago, uh, learning about uh, a cult, uh, as you see the name of the, the title of the broadcast today. And I don't really know much about those people, except what I heard from the news. Now, what I heard from the news is that, uh, you know, uh, this cult is growing, was growing very fast, and very important, famous people, if we can call them important, because important is, depend who you are and what you think is important for you. But th there is many people who they are considered important, and I'm here quoting what people say, uh, like actors, uh, you know, they join this cult. Now, this cult, as we learned, if you go to their website, they introduce themselves as something very good. It's a community guided by humanitarian principles. I mean, everybody is trying to scam us by what it's called humanitarian and a principle. Everybody have a principle these days. Prostitutes have a principles. Hookers have a prostitute. You know, uh, Hillary Clinton she have a principle. Obama have a principle. The gays and the lesbian have a principle. The Christian have a principle. The Muslims have a principle. Everybody have a principle. But the principle is a word being nothing unless we go and examine what those principles is. So here you will see it says that this is a humanitarian movement who have a principle seek to empower people and answer important questions. It sounds like very uh, similar for me, something I heard before, about what means to be human. Mm -hmm. uh, the next uh, VIM, whatever you call it, philosophy is, is expressed through the series of companies. Now you hear here, you, you see the word companies, you think it's really just a business, but this, this is not really what it's, it is. It is a business, yes, for sure it is a business, but it is a business involving controlling the life of people. So look how they started a presentation to themselves that they are empowering people. But who are they, those people who they are empower and what the word empower mean? I am going to empower you. Hmm, interesting, how that can be. But in order to empower you, you have to donate a few thousand dollars to me. Uh-huh. Okay, and what I will get in return after I give my money to you. So here you will see how they fool people into a, to, to this cult. And then you will see that they are speaking about themselves, that they are people who have ethical, more sustainable, ethical world. I mean, how and what is better than this presentation is ethical. So you yourself, when you hear about this uh, organization, you say to yourself, this is a very ethical. Look, they are putting it in the front of their you know, page and they are teaching us about ethic. And then here you will see, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. That's amazing. Look like there is a wisdom behind. Here we have a Confucius. Uh, here we have uh, the prophet of Islam, peace upon him, because he's very wise too. So alone we can do little, so little, but together we can do so much. That's deep. That's very deep. What exactly together we are going to do, which is going to be so much? The news start leaking and investigating come our, our investigation coming after our investigation that the much they do is about sexual, uh, you know, like uh, controlling uh, for women, females. Uh, they made them, they recruit them, and then they control them, they control their mind, and they force them into sex with certain people in order to get something out of this uh, sexuality. This is how they are going to empower you, and this is how they are going to produce to us a new ethical world. 
Now, if we go and search in the news and nothing is coming from my own, you will see that this is BBC News speaking about this cult, say, six cult case, as you see in the front of you. Let me make the text bigger so you guys can read better than what it is right now. <clears throat> I hope now it's better for you. Uh, and as we learned that this is a partnership between two uh, people, one is a female who is an actor, and one is the founder who is obviously a scammer, and he have a history of a scam. Women locked in a room for two years by this cult leader. Hmm. They are locked for what? Hmm. Conspiracy, trafficking, and the fraud case brought to the by the federal government. How actress Christine Karuk, I don't know how to say her name, forgive me please, uh, is dodging her blah 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 cult in the past, blah blah blah. Uh, sees Graham, hairdresser, blah blah blah, blah board hearing today, and etc. cult. And the funny, there's many famous people, they were part of this filthy cult and now suddenly they are washing their hands from it because it's exposed and especially especially it became involved like something uh, uh, you know will take you to jail if you are a member of it so suddenly every scumbag who was part of this cult and very active recruiting people start saying i have nothing to do with it yes i did join but i never hurt anyone i never did anything anything bad but Obviously, in that cult, there's people who they are victims and there's people who they are the criminals. And I hope the government, they will be able to find who is who. If we read more in the news, you will see that this, uh, this arrest series is going to continue. And even some people, they are leaking this cult to Hillary Clinton and her husband, Billy Clinton. And all of us, we remember that Hillary Clinton, she claimed that she have a better ethic and she is going to empower women. So remember, she is a woman. But you know, people, they forgot that there's a lot of women, they've been abused by women, not necessarily the abuser always is the man. And today, the case is no different. You know, the, the leader of this cult is a man, and he have a partner with him. And actually, they brand people by tattoo, by burning their skin by a laser, uh, putting the first letter of the actor, which is a female, and the founder, which is a male. So both of them, the male and the female, they are the one who started this sex cult. And they brand people and they put tattoo on them. And supposedly they are going to empower your daughter to be a better person. Uh, you know, if we play the advertising for those, uh, for this cult, you can go to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to YouTube and you can search about it. And you will find tons of videos speaking about this this cult. Now I don't really be you know I'm not going to go by everything is said in in uh, in YouTube or even in news. Uh, we better wait to see what this is all is about more and more. And for sure the court the court is the one who will decide who is the criminal and who is the, the the victim. For me, I find that this cult after reading and searching for the last days about it. I found it very similar to Islam. And you know, if you think about it, if you go right now and search about what is Islam and you search what is this cult, what is this cult? You know, you will see that this cult presents itself as we showed you as something very highly ethical, human, loving and giving and empowering people and seeking better humanitarian world. Islam is no better. Islam speak about self try to present itself as the savior of the world. But in fact, Islam is no better than this cult. Islam is a religion focused in recruiting people into sex. As an example, as we speak today, the war is going to be launched soon in the north of Syria between the Syrian army and the Mujahideen, which is in the uh, in the borders with Turkey, and they are sponsored by the Turkish government, which is a terrorist government. And those terrorists, they are recruited to join a very ethical religion, it's called Islam, and it is about submission or surrender to God. 
if you go in this cult here, all, all the female in this cult, they surrender, even the male, they surrender to the founder of this cult and the other lady. So both of them, it's about surrendering yourself in total obedience to a founder of a sex cult. Some might say, oh, there is nothing to share between them. The fact everything between them is the same. When you brand people and you claim that you are making them better, you cannot differentiate that from Islam. In Islam, they brand you. As an example, the second you join Islam, you are branded as a Muslim, and if you try to leave the brand, they will execute you. Now, this guy in this cult, until now, nobody conv convicted him that he killed any of those females who joined his cult and they left, which means he is a lot better than Islam. So we can say that this cult is maybe a lot better when it's come to ethic to Muhammad. Muhammad, he will not let you leave. The second you join, you are in and you cannot get out. Same time, Islam you know, present itself as a very high ethic religion, claiming that they are the most clean people. The, the, when we speak about cleaning, you think we are talking about hygiene. It is not about hygiene. Islam make the Muslims believe just because they convert to Islam, they are the only one clean and everyone else is dirty. Dirty as pig. Actually, the Quran call us pigs and monkeys and apes. And the Quran call everyone who is not a Muslim the worst of the creatures. And the Quran call everyone who is not a Muslim evil doers. You know, rebellion, whatever you name it. If you go to this cult here, you will notice that they describe you as a person who is not part of their membership or their, their organization as somebody is lost in this world and you have no goal in your life and you are no one. And after you join this cult, if you ask a question, as I saw in many videos, if you ask a question about, uh, the, the, the let's say, uh, how, I mean, why I should be obedient to this guy? I mean, they say to him, how, how dare you even to ask those questions? Everything you have is because of him. So I find that the founder of this cult is so much the same as Muhammad. You... The second you convert to Islam, they make you as you are not exist, if not Muhammad. If you go in the Hadith, as an example, the Muslims, they claim that the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, he taught them everything, including my language. I'm just reading what is going to be in front of me. And I will show it to you on the screen. Let me switch to Arabic. Because you know, sometimes sometime people they think I'm speaking rude. I'm not. I'm just reading as it is. I don't. I don't sugarcoat things. So I say it as it is. You will see here a person saying to a Muslim, a person from the Arab saying to the Muslims, one of the Muslims, I see that your friend is teaching you even how to do shit and excuse my language. You see. In here, in the translation, the Muslims, they did not put the word shit. Let us say that this is a very shitty translation. In Arabic, it says shit as it is. I see that your friend speaking about Muhammad, he teach you everything, including how to do shit. And this is what Islam is about. Islamic claim, the human, you are not able, not even able to be capable to do shit by yourself. Islam will teach you how to do shit. Without Islam, you do not know how to do it. If you see here that what the Muslims give in the translation, it doesn't say anywhere the word which is mentioned in Arabic. I see that your friend even teaching you about the extreme uh, uh, extreme that is replied yes in fact forbidden us that anyone amongst you or uh, should clean himself with the right hand or face the qibla but this is not really what it says there exactly the word shit is appear as it is so islam is a religion try to make you believe that even shit you do not know how to deal with it if you are not 
a member of this cult. But all of us, we knew that a human being, I mean, um, I don't want to be rude, but uh, people around the world, they shit day and night, and nobody need Islam to do it. And even cats, when they shit, they don't need to be Muslims, they cover their poo-poo. So what, what, what the Muslims are talking about? Muhammad, even when he do it, he used to clear his ass with the three rocks. And this is not really right. Even Muhammad, I can show you some hadith where Muhammad, he clean his hands, uh, he dry his hand in the wall of his room. And Muhammad, he piss inside his room, his bedroom. And not only that, he put the pee under his bed. Hmm, interesting. I wonder how his room smell like. So here, you will see the cult trying to put in your head, the brain wash you, making you believe that be before Islam, people, they are savage. They are nothing. But, you know, before Islam, people, they were wonderful. Islam make people go thousands of years back Word, not forward. You see, since Islam occupied the country, it's called, let's say, uh, uh, Egypt. What happened to Egypt? What happened? Every single mosque is built in Egypt is built by the hand of Christians. Christians. Same in Syria. Same in Jordan. Same in whatever you go. They don't have any builders. You see, the Muslims, they speak about the civilization they established in Spain. All the builders who built in Spain, they were Spanish. The first time ever the Arab, they took a boat to invade Spain, it was by forcing the Aramaic Syrian to make boats for them. And they are the one who did ride the boat for them which means even they don't even know how to go in the boat and and now all jewelry stores in the middle east they take off saturday and sunday for a very simple reason the jewelry makers is not muslims is either christians or jews for muslims do not know how to make jewelries so what islam brought to the world is nothing since islam came or exist what is the civilization let us see the the cradle of civilization of islam if we can say that st statement if we go to mecca what we will learn about mecca what is in mecca mecca not long time ago it was just an empty place where is nothing so if i type here in arabic uh suwar qadima mecca old images for Mecca what we will find you will not believe it nothing and this is when this is when the time where cameras are exist let us say a hundred years ago if you look at this picture here as an example look at Mecca this is Mecca people are still in the tent this is just what a hundred years ago this is Mecca <laughs> This is Mecca. This is not long time ago. This is not like many centuries ago. This is just about a hundred years ago. I mean, I don't know what time, what year it was the first time a camera start coming, but this is before the revolution of the oil. This is Mecca. Why Mecca don't have a civilization? If Islam produced civilization, why Saudi Arabia until now? We cannot find anything really civil in it. Where is the palaces? Where is uh, everything they claim to belong to what it's called Arab have nothing to do with the Arab. As an example, if you go to Yemen, people of Yemen, they claim today, because this is what happened, you know, the, the uh, enforcing the Arab culture and everybody, they force everybody to believe that if you are from Yemen, you are an Arab. Not only you are from Arab, you are the origin of the Arab, but this is absolutely a lie. If you go to the, the temple, which is called al maqa which is the name of Mecca is coming from it you will find that in that temple they could not find one Arabic letter there they could not find even one Arabic word there why because simply those people are not Arab so where is the civilization of Islam can be exist in Syria the Syrian people they have different languages called Aramaic and one they are one of the most ancient people who they have a history great history of knowledge 
since the Muslims came there what happened to Syria go and see it destroyed same the Muslims came to Egypt what happened to Egypt what is left of civilization of Egypt nothing except what is what it was before Islam what is left of civilization right now in Syria almost nothing because the Muslim destroy it so Islam destroy civilization don't build Ibn Khaldun Ibn Khaldun and he's a Muslim he said the Arab are savage and I'm quoting here and remember I am supposedly an Arab as they call me uh, the Arab are savage people who they are willing to destroy a palace or a library to take the wood or the paper from it to cook in it this is Ibn Khaldun the Muslims are so proud about Ibn Khaldun and this is what Ibn Khaldun he said in his introduction and Ibn Khaldun is a very famous philosopher and the Muslims are so proud about him but by the way all the scientists which Muslims are proud about today either being killed or being executed uh, uh, in a very like a like some they are killed in let us say in a merciful killing that beheading and some they've been burned some they've been uh, uh, putting inside a stick in their in their bomb I mean they they torture them they slaughter them they did everything today they are proud about them uh, I remember once when I was in high school and this is another issue about uh, uh, the Middle East in in the history uh, book we have a section in the history book it's it's so it's, it's it's called Arab Arabian scientist Arabian scientist and then the teacher start talking about the scientist his name is al khawarizmi maybe I can khawarizmi um, let us see maybe we can get uh, his image All right, this is Al Khwarizmi, as you see from Wikipedia or Google. Al Khwarizmi is a very famous person in mathematics. And then in our school, they are teaching us about how amazing this Al Khwarizmi person. And he is exist in the Arab scientist section. So I asked the teacher a very simple question. I tried to figure out what Al Khwarizmi means. And I could not find a meaning for it. You know, as you know, Arabic is my first language, and I'm very, you know, strong in the in the Arabic language. I could not find any meaning for this word. So I said to the teacher, "Why his name is Al Khwarizmi? What does that mean?" The teacher said, "Well, Al Khwarizmi because he is born in Khwarizm." Okay, what is Khwarizm? He said, "It is what is Iran today." Oh, let's say it was Iran at that time. So I said. Uh, but 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 he supposedly in the section in the history book under the Arabian scientist. So how he is Arabian, but he is born in Khawarizm. And you just said it is in Iran, which means he is a Persian. He said, no question, no more. Let it go. So I found later that everything in our history is nothing but a lie. Persian scientists who they are considered as most of them are atheists and most of them they get killed or tortured Today they claim that they are Arab the Arab they claim that Al Khwarizmi is an Arab ISIS they claim Al Khwarizmi uh, Was a Muslim Al Qaeda they consider Al Khwarizmi An atheist a different group it depends what the group is so like uh, the scientist is called a Razi is the same story a Razi is an atheist, but they say he is a Muslim scholar. But yeah, you know, the, he he was a scholar in Islam and he left Islam. He defended Islam and then he decided Islam is a garbage. So, you know, uh, 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 what I'm trying to present to you that everybody delivered to you his own history, but the history is not necessarily a history. It can be a lie. The Muslims today, they try to present that Iraq is their land, but this is the land of the Assyrian. They try to present to you that Egypt is their land, but this is the land of the Egyptian. The, the Muslims who call themselves, quote unquote, Palestinian, they say this is our land, but this is the fact. Those are not Palestinian. Those are the Arab who invade this land after the year 600 and after the death of Muhammad, not even in his lifetime. So how they are the one who own the land. Before that day, not even a single person speak Arabic in that, land, in, the, in that land. 
not in Syria, not in Jordan, not in, in Israel, uh, not in Egypt, not in Morocco, not in Tunisia, not in Spain, not anywhere. So the history around us is a bunch of corruption. So everybody, everybody tried to present himself as the best he can present in order to fool you. Muhammad, he and his cult try to present themselves that they are going to save you. Here, if you notice here, if you read the news, I'm not going to play videos about this cult, are forcing girls and women into sex. But isn't it, this is exactly what Muhammad he did? Muhammad, he said, if a woman refused to go to bed, if the man asked her to do so, that the angels are going to curse her until she take off her panty. The same. The woman in that cult, she is going to be cursed by the leader and she is going to be condemned and she will not be blessed by him and he is God for them and, you know, unless she take off her panty and she have sex with the leader or whatever he please, uh, whatever he wish, like a politician or something they have a benefit from. If we go here, let us see. You will read with me the following. Mm, I'm trying to find the hadith. Where is the hadith? <clears throat> <clears throat> it look like it's not coming. I, I will find this. You know, uh, we will we will post it in the text later. So, so if if the woman she refused to come to the bed, the angels will curse her. Sometimes this website is not. Uh, for search uh, uh, so the duty of a Muslim woman is uh, uh, you know is is sexual abduction of a human being in this case it's a female but there is other sexual abduction which is the male because he himself will be a slave of Muhammad Muhammad he provide him with sex in return what is the return you go and you kill for me there is there is a there's a very famous man his name is Hassan al-Hashash Let's try to find his name in English. Maybe we can get something. Or maybe we can find... Uh, let us see. Uh, maybe you can, we can find an, uh, like a, an English version of this. Let, us, let me see. Okay, uh, maybe here we can search for something like this. I'm trying just to find what is the term is used in, in the English language. Um, I don't see anything in English for some reason. Uh, anyway, all of us, we knew that there is a word that's called assassin. An assassin is, a, is an English word, right? But assassin, the fact, have nothing to do with English and have nothing to do with Latin. Assassin is coming from the the, the cult, which is exist in certain time, during even the crusade time. And this Islamic cult, uh, established by a guy, his name is Al-Hashash. Al-Hashash, the word Al-Hashash means the one in drugs. Uh, hashash coming from the word Hashish, which means hash-hash. So this person, he is, uh, or the one who established this cult, uh, which is coming from uh, the, 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 the biggest cult, it's called Ismaili, and they all exist now in, in uh, uh, their, their leader, uh, he's a prince, he exists in uh, Canada. And the prime minister of Canada, he welcomed him many times, and there's many interview with him, and they produced to you him as he is the leader of the most wonderful cult. 
But the fact this is cult is based in assassination and killing for hundreds of years. So the history of this cult is very well known that what those people do, this or this leader, the founder, he bring you to his cult, uh, or let us say to one of his castles. Let us say you are a man, uh, an ordinary man, and he invites you to his uh, to his uh, uh, castle. He is a rich man. And then they give you free food, free women, free drink, as much as you want, sex, everything you want, four, six, seven, eight months. And during the day, uh, between the sex and the drink and etc., there is, you have to attend, uh, let us say, some rituals and the spiritual teaching of the leader. During that spiritual teaching, he, like, let us say, he teach you about how to be happy in life. In order to be happy, you have to be in his group and what his group can do for you. And after six or seven months of being part of this cult, they ask you to go and assassinate someone before you can come back to the heaven which he provides you. Because remember, in this castle, you do nothing. You do no job. You don't work. Free food, free beautiful women, unlimited, and free food, for unlimited food, unlimited drink. Have fun. Nothing, they want nothing from you until they call you every few months asking you to go and kill somebody. So what the Hashash do, he call upon one of his men and then he send a message to one of the kings or let us say princes or a leader or a rich man. And he said to him, I decided that you have to pay me by the coming that I say Tuesday, uh, 3,000 piece of gold. I will give you until that day to stay alive if you don't pay me you are dead and this is exactly what will happen if this guy refused to pay him al hashash he will never stop sending any of his men until he assassinate that guy and this is where the word assassin is coming from as origin uh, long history but the point of this the reason i'm telling you about about those uh, those things that uh, 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 history always repeat itself. Always. Assassination, it was a method of controlling. But sometimes assassination is very dangerous. You cannot do assassination easy. Today, technology is far beyond what it used to be before. And today, before, you can hide yourself in a castle in the middle of nowhere. And if the enemy come to get you, you can move to a different place, hide yourself until they leave. But today, the, the, the world is different. You know, there's cameras, there's security, there's airport, there's things you need to do. You cannot just ride a horse. So things are different, and technology is different. A, they kill you by destroying your mentality, controlling your brain, recruiting you willingly in the beginning, and after that, you be, became their, their, their sex slave, or you became uh, a mujahid, which is a sex slave anyway. You know, when a person he joined ISIS, what is his goal? His goal is to die to get the virgins. It is sex. It's all about sex. And this is why I wrote my book, and I call it uh, the last book, uh, variant number one and two, Sex and Allah. So what is sex and Allah is about? Simply it's about what is the goal of Islam, and it's all of it is focused in one thing, which is sexuality. Now, if we ask any one of those who they are, uh, part of this cult or let us say the founder of this cult what do you think uh, uh, you know what you what you are going to accomplish for us he will say to you that I am here to help humanity I am here to pr pr to produce better work Hassan al-Hashash or which is Hassan al-Sabah he was coming with the same story he have a castle it's called the castle of death and he is a person he will protect you he have a lot of power. It's the same as a kind of a Mason movement, but long time ago. All those organizations are exist for one reason, power, money, and sex. And if we compare between Islam and Al-Hashash, which is the assassin, and this cult, I don't find really much different between them. It sounds like the devil just Sometimes he comes to you in an image of a, a handsome man uh, and he looked like as a civil person. Like if you look at this person in this image here, you will say to yourself, this is, must be a very friendly person. Look at this face. 
You know, I mean, what I heard from the news about him, me, myself, I do not know this guy. I'm just saying what they say in the news. Uh, they are saying very ugly stuff, extremely ugly stuff. But if you look at the face of this person, uh, if you want to judge the person by the cover, I mean, the cover look really good. I don't see anything scary or threatening there. I don't see someone look like somebody he joined ISIS. I see a very friendly face, uh, you know, a nice smile and uh, uh, nothing wrong. But as always, the devil, he provides himself always in the best image. You know, we know that the Bible provides us with a lot of warning that people will come to you in the clothes of sheep, but the fact they are wolves. The same as we side, we find even inside our churches. You might find somebody he is a bishop in a church, but in fact he is a sex, you know, predator, like a, a, a beast, and he is a child molester, like Muhammad. So the devil always he find his way, always, and you have to be careful. He can come to you through a Christian person. He can come to you through a Muslim person. He can come to you through God. He can, you know, you close the window, he, he comes from the door. You close the door, he comes from the chimney. You close the chimney, he comes from the sewage. It depends who are you. If you are a religious person, he will come to you wearing the clothes of a religious person. If you are a prostitute, he will come to you in a form of a pimp. If you are, it, it depends, he changes his shape, he changes his look, he changes his method, he changes his statement and his flag. But at the end, all of them, they are one. Islam is the same. If you go and see Muhammad speaking uh, a thousand years ago, or let us say the Muslim today, like this is a Muslim website. It's called Why Islam. If you if you if you look at this website, uh, you know Islam is the way of life. I mean, read it. It's in the front of you. If you go and watch the commercial of this person, he is saying the same that our cult is the way of life. Both they claim to be the way of life, but what, what way of life we find later that is about sex slavery, human trafficking. This religion brand you two and brand females specifically. All of us we knew that Muslim they say that we do circumcision for Muslim, but the fact it's not circumcision, it's a mutilation for their sexual part, in order that the women she will not feel anything, she will be just a sex slave without feeling. You know, if you ask a Muslim, what is the purpose? Of circumcision for women, many Muslims will give you a false answer, but I can show you in front of you in the screen. And actually, I provide that before that circumcision is done to reduce the women' need of sex. So Islam is focusing on circumcision for the women because he want the women not to feel any sexual joy because they want to be sure that she will be just a servant provider but not a receiver she is just a person who we can have sex with but she will not ask for sex so she will not go out of the line which is the one we draw she have to go to bed when she want she have to be our sex slave but she should not ask for sex. It is the man only he asks for sex. This guy is the same. You join his cult and then you will face sexuality in a very ugly way where you became abducted by a group of people who they control your life and they force you into slavery and they force you to go to bed to a man you even you don't know. This time is no different. You know, when Muhammad, he did ask for the hand of Aisha at the age of six years old. The first question many, they ask himself is only about the age. The fact, this is not about the age. Uh, what it is, it's about abduction. <clears throat> Let me try to find the hadith for you. Here we go. You will see here it says that the Prophet asked Abu Bakr for Aisha hand in marriage. Abu Bakr said to him, but I am your brother. Look here, listen carefully. Abu Bakr, he is not really excited about this marriage. She is a girl. 
and he don't want this marriage. This guy don't fit for her. He's 54 years old and she is just a little baby. Muhammad, look what he said. Abu Bakr said, but I am your brother, which means shame on you. We are brother, man. The prophet said, you are my brother in Allah religion and his book, but she is li halal. You see here, the Muslim translate, they said she is lawful for me in marriage. This is what he said. He said, but she is li halal, which means she is mine. It's an abduction. Abu Bakr, he did not dare to say no. And this is how Muhammad, he have her. The sex leader or the cult leader of sexuality or sex, he always forced the members in his cult to provide him with sex service and you cannot say no. If we go in the Quran, we will find Muhammad doing that again and again and again. As an example, we, we know that there is a verse in the Quran is speaking that any women, any women, unlimited numbers of women, she is welcome to offer herself to the Prophet to if her, not to marry her, as the Muslim they lie in the translation. Here you will see in this chapter, chapter 33, verse number 50, that any Muslim woman she can offer herself to the Prophet so he can if her, not to marry her, as you see here, and a believe in women. If she give herself into the Prophet and the Prophet desire to ask her in a marriage, doesn't say that, a liar. <laughs> what is the word marriage? Uh, so what is the benefit and what is the reason that the leader of this religion, he needed such a verse that any woman in this religion, she can offer her vagina to the leader. I challenge any Muslim to tell me what is the reason behind that? What is the wisdom? And this is, as you see, this is a privilege only to thee. In this cult, this is a privilege only to thee. <laughs> it's a privilege, my friend. A prophet one of his privilege that any woman in the world she can open her legs and take off her panty to him isn't it obvious that he is the most important man in the world can't you are you blind can't you see how important he is to the point god he wanted him to have a special privilege and the privilege must be about sex it's not about something else. Why? The prophet, he have already 13 wives. He have tons of sex slaves. What do you mean any woman she gave herself to the prophet to if her? And this is a privilege to thee. You see, when somebody says that our leader is the best example of us, where is the best example when the prophet or the best example have many privilege only for him? The best example, my friend, is, as I know, is Jesus who washed the feet of his followers and he said to them, if you don't do what, if you don't do what I do, you are not and you don't belong to me. So Christ himself, he did not give himself a privilege, even though the Christians believe his God. Christ himself, he washed the feet of his followers. He did not order the followers to wash his feet. He washed his, their feet. And he ordered all his apostles, if you don't do that, you don't even know me. I don't belong to you. You don't belong to me. He didn't say to each one of them, you have a privilege of women and sex and gold and silver. Muhammad, he have, according to Muslims, at least 20 privilege. More than 16 of them is about sex and money. Why? For it is a cult. Uh, the funny in the Quran, when the Quran speak about Paul and the apostle of Jesus, the Quran confirm 
that the Christians, apostles, they never ask for wages. Let us see if we can find it. Oh. Let us see. All right. Anyway, so the Quran confirmed that all the apostles of Jesus, they never ask uh, uh, for wages, and always they are people who they serve, and they are very decent. And this is the funny thing about Islam, that the Muslims do not know, that uh, uh, the Quran speak highly about the apostle of Jesus. And they attack Paul left and right. And actually, this is my coming book. is going to be about the apostle of Jesus. Uh, let us see. Uh, let us see. And the funny, the Quran uh, uh, repeat many times that good prophet of Allah didn't ask for wages, but Muhammad, as you see, he have tons of verses speaking about himself, and all of them is about having wages, and those wages are people are are sex and money and gold and silver. Uh, I'm trying just to find. Let us see. Here we go. In chapter, in this chapter, chapter thirty-six, which is speaking about Paul and uh, and uh, uh, Peter and the other uh, apostle, for sure, did not mention them by name, but it mentioned them in the tafsir. You will see in this verse speaking that Allah supposedly advising people to follow those who ask you not for wages. Do you see it? Follow those who ask you no fee. But this verse is speaking about who? Speaking about the apostle of Jesus Christ. And they are speaking, saying, follow those who ask you no fee. So if I ask the Muslims now, can we find verses in the Quran where Muhammad, he enforced fees for himself? The answer is very simple, yes. The, the Quran is full of those, and there is a very famous one of them, where Muhammad even, he required Muslims to pay him before even they enter his house in order to have a private consultation. As you see here with me, in chapter 58, verse number 12, it says, O who you believe, before you enter into the Prophet in the private consultation, you know, you better be the prophet. Uh, charity, suppose this is charity. I mean, I never heard of a charity. You are enforcing it in order just to come and talk to a prophet of God. You will see here, all who you believe, when you consult with the messenger in private, spend something in charity before your private consultation. Have you ever heard, as we showed you now, that in chapter 30, uh, 36, verse number 21, the apostles of, of Christ, they said, Follow who ask you no fee. How stupid this Quran is. How one verse says, follow those who ask you no fee, no money, no wages. And then Muhammad, he himself, he asked you to pay him before even you meet him in a private. And this is exactly what, what happened with those cults. When you join the cult, not only it's not for free, you have to pay them. Imagine they are going to control you, they are going to destroy your life, they are going to make you sex a slave, and yet you have to pay to pay them a couple of thousand of dollars to join. Because they made you believe that they are going to empower you when you join. You will become something important. We are a community guided by humanitarian principle that seek to empower people and answer important questions. So do you want to be empowered? Do you want to 
have a questions or do you have a questions need to be answered do you want to have a better life all of those things we provide you and this is exactly what Islam is about when you want to meet with Muhammad you have to pay him when you join this cult you have to pay a couple of thousand of dollars Muhammad he made a verse on the Quran which I find it very funny Muhammad he gave a very honest description of his religion and he considered it, he called it in Arabic Tijara what Tijara mean let us see يا أيها الذين آمنوا هل أدلكم على تجارة تنجيكم من عذاب أليم والتجارة I want to know what تجارة is you can read any translation you want chapter 61 verse number 10 and you will find that تجارة is nothing but a trade business bargaining what kind of religion it's a bargaining it's a business it's a trade do you want me to lead you into Right, a bargain that will save you from penalty. So Muhammad he make it clear that this is a company, it's a bargain, it's a trade business. If you go here in this cult, you will see it says the same. Is a community guided by humility, and then they says it's a series of companies. Do you see it? It's a company, it's a business. At the end of the day, we are a business. Muhammad, he made it clear. At the end of the day, this is all about business, nothing personal. Do you want to invest with me? Give me your money, and then Allah will return that to you many, many, many times. This is why Muhammad, he promised Uthman ibn Affan, the one who invested a lot of money with Muhammad, that he will have one of the best places in heaven he was one of the ten who will go to heaven and by the way he was killed and tortured by muslims before they kill him they even took the the, the, the hair of his beard the caliphate of uthman you see the muslim right now we are reading supposedly according to muslims the quran of uthman but what people do not know that uthman was captured by the muslims and before they killed him they tortured him to the point they were taking hair from his beard one by one and after they cut his head they drag him in the ground in the city of mecca and they was playing with him like a volleyball and his head became like a football and even at, after that they refused to bury him anywhere which means he was routing in the street like a dog and then a group of muslims secretly they carry him and they bury him in a jewish graveyard because he don't deserve to be buried with the Muslims. This is the one who is the one who protected what it's called Quran today from being destroyed. This is what the Muslims did to him. So Muhammad, as a cult, always insists that money come first. And Islam is a bargain. Islam is a business. Islam is a company. You join this company, you do the right investment, Allah will give you your reward, many, many double. And here we find that this is exactly what that cult is about. All cults actually is about reward. You see, if you speak to, to many cults like Jehovah's Witnesses, they will insist about rewards. And the reward is about something we don't even know uh, how it comes to their mind. Is something funny and something stupid and they themselves they can't explain to us you see the reward for me is not going to be as a christian about god giving me gold and silver or a bigger house or a nice car or whatever the the, the you will see all christianity is focusing in very high quality uh, uh, life which is not a reward of a physical money and gold and silver it is you will be free and you will be free what? You will be free from the reward. You see, the reward in Islam is gold and silver. If you go here in the Quran as an example, you will see that in the cult of Islam, Allah will give you when you join Islam, 
bracelets to wear them. And those bracelets are made from gold. And you will sit in a couches and you will wear a green silk. So you will notice here that you are not really rewarded. You became more a slave than a free person. Because now you are going to be held into a garden for eternity. And this garden have rivers. And those rivers are river of wine, river of milk, river of honey. And then you are going to be wearing a bracelet made of gold. And they will wear a green garment of and have a, like a clothes. They will recline their end, raised in their couches. Now, if you think about it, is that really a reward or this is stupid? I mean, that first of all is boring. Five stars hotel. And you tell me you will live in it for eternity. This found five stars hotel have a fountain. And there's a fountain, it's called the fountain of youth. When a Muslim he entered it, he drank from it, and he will become youth, young. And he will stay 33 years old for the rest of his life, the same age as Jesus. And then after you drink from this water, your face will change, and your look will change. You will look like Joseph, and you will have the age of Jesus. About the females, or then they, are, they will be very young, they will be very like, like uh, children, and they will have round boobs, excuse my language. They will have round breasts. So uh, the Quran focus in a reward which is kind of the same as a reward of somebody work in Las Vegas, somebody he is a pimp, somebody is a drug dealer, somebody is a trying to make you a slave, not a free man. Because the reward, you know, when you say to me, I will give you the power of 40 men. And Muhammad, he will have the power of 4,000 men. If you have my book, Six and Allah, you will see the reference. So when you say that to me, that's mean you are not making me a happy person. You are making me more addicted to sex. When I was on earth, maybe I needed to have sex once a day, twice a day, three times a day. No, in heaven, now I have to do it over and over and over and on a stop. So I'm not really rewarded. What is the reward? The best reward a human being is to be free from needs, not to be a person who increased in needs. What Islam do increase your needs, your needs for sex, your needs for food, your need for a drink, your needs is controlling you. When a religion, when a God, he described the women he will provide to me, and he would say to me, Kawaibun Atraba. Kawaibun Atraba mean that they have round the breast, and all of them they are from the same ages. What same ages mean? All girls who they are youth, like you know, let's say uh, they are 10 years old, 13 years old, between that age, they have a breast which is firmed and they are not coming down. So Allah He wanted to be sure that you are going to have women. Who have such a kind of a breast not any kind of women if you go to translation actually let us see different Islamic translation uh, you will see as an example here the translation come in as of equal age but this is not really true what equal age? What equal age? Look at the translation. This is not about equal age. What is the word we're describing the size of the breast? That's false. I don't even see it there. You know? Not even one of them he has given us a correct translation. But the Quran confirm to us that those women they will have nice breast and they will have all of them a, a, a firm looking breast and they they are in a certain shape uh, let us see here those translation shakir biktal let us see 
Let us see, Bechtel, what you will see here. All right. Ah, oh, you see? Here the translation became more a little bit more clear. Do you see what it says there? That is interesting. So those women, they have a firm breast and they are all of them in equal age. So all the women in heaven, they will be in one age. And that the age of the children who have firm breast. So they are just like they are going to be women. They are not women yet. And they have firm breast. They are not women who have a breast which is big and coming down. No, no, no. Muslims, they like women who they are not women yet. They are children. This is explained to us in Muhammad description where he asked one of his men, don't you like to marry a child so you can sport with her? So they like always very young girls. And those young girls, they are going to be restrained in their tent. If you go and read about those cults, you will find that many of those girls, they are jailed in the uh, uh, rooms and they, they were not able to go out for two years, as I see in some news. Let us see here what it says in the news. Here we go. Women locked in a room for two years by this cult leader. This is what it says. It's not my statement. I never met this guy. I have no idea what, what, uh, what is the truth really. But if you go here, the Quran confirm that women, they are going to be restrained. They are going to be jailed inside their rooms. And those rooms, those women, they will never see any man for eternity except one man. And that is the man who is giving them as, or they are giving to him as reward. So it says here, uh, um, let us see. Uh, if we go, all, all, all those verses in the front of us is speaking about the same thing. Uh, but if I go here in chapter 55, verse number 56, if I go right now, and I, I, I click at the translation Muslims they give me in this website, which is owned by the Dean Show website. You will see how fast the translation. So I will try to find it in this website just to give you how Muslims they try to fabricate translation. If we read here together, let us see in this. Uh, uh, it's not coming, I think, because there is. Let us see. I'll see a You will see here. I don't see anything. I think the internet is not working good. Huh? I don't know why. Let us see. All right. If you read here in chapter 55, verse number 56, you will see how the translation changed depend who is the translator. Look here with me how they play with it. Uh, in this translation, as an example, it says, Therein shall be those of referring look whom before them has uh, def deflowered, neither by men or gen. But it doesn't say that. Where is the rest of the verse? That's false. And look at this guy, the same. And look at this guy. The same, and look at this guy, the same, all of them, they give you a false translation. But if you go down a little bit, we will find one of them. By mistake, maybe he was honest. By mistake. Wherein both will be those medians restraining their gallants. What, what gallants? It, does, it doesn't say gallants. It says in the tents. What gallants? Upon their husband, whom no man or jinn has opened their private part. You can read the words there where it says. The one who, th those women, just to, to give you the good news, my friend, those women, the skin inside their vagina is never been touched. And this is written in the Quran, as it is. As it is. But if you read with me all the translation, none of them says that. Why? Because Muslims always want to translate they don't read, they don't, it's, the translation is not meant to translate. The translation is meant to sell out Islam to you. The same as a car dealer. He want to sell you a car. It doesn't matter what you what you choose. He will say to you, it's the best. 
You say Mazda, he say Mazda is the best. You say Honda, he say Honda is the best. You say Mercedes, he say Mercedes is the best. So here, the translation, all of them, they are saying, trying to, pro to provide to you what they want to make you believe it is the best. But the fact, the language is dirty, filthy, and the logic is more demanding of sex and sexuality. And why God, when I describe for me, what is inside the vagina of a woman? You see, Islam is not only telling me about a woman I will have in heaven, Allah he is extending his fingers to open a private part of women and to describe for me what is inside so listen to me Abdul I am Allah and now I'm going to give you versions in case you do not know what versions mean those are women who nobody play inside excuse my language guys I'm just showing you how stupid this is, is. but people don't want to see people they take it as like okay God he promised us that we will not have uh, we will have version it doesn't say even that it's not about versions. He is describing to you that nobody broke the skin of their vagina. This is what it says in the front of your eyes. With no sugar coating. Actually, I have this verse in the cover of my book. If you have my book, the last one I'm talking about, Sex and Allah. But the question is, why Muslims always, when they translate, they try to provide us verses are not even exist? Because if I look for the meaning, which is translated, I cannot find those verses they are talking about in the Quran, where we can find them. And I was really surprised that this guy, he was honest in the translation somehow, except here when he said in their gallons. So always we need to remember one thing that all cults they focus in what they call a reward but the second the reward is about the, the, the second you find out that the reward is money and gold and sex you better know that this is a cult immediately why um why god our almighty the one who created the earth and the heaven, he go to the level to speak about what is inside the vagina of a woman. I don't know if you guys, you understand what I'm saying. What kind of God he might describe to me what is inside the vagina? I mean, why it is important for him? Is that important for him or for me? Obviously, it's important for him. If God... Of Islam is a true God and he speak about what is inside the vagina obviously he is very much considering this topic as a very important topic for him to speak about to the point he have to describe for us that those women they will be jailed in their rooms and nobody nobody open their legs and I, I apologize from all the ladies are listening but this is how it is and then he go farther to be more rude and describe to us what is inside the private part of a woman how disgusting but because now you became a sex addicted person because now you became a sex slave you see, sex slave is not necessarily the female, the male too. Because now Allah is supposedly trying to tempt you and seduce you by sex. And he promised you that when you go to heaven, I will give you the power of 40 men. So now you need more women and you need more energy and you need more private parts. When Muhammad, he promised the Muslim men that you will have an endless penis. Isn't it obvious that this guy is a scumbag? I mean, what kind of, a, imagine, imagine, forgive me, Lord, for saying this, imagine uh, Peter said, God will give us endless penis. Imagine Paul says that. The Muslims will eat you alive. The atheists will make fun of you. Muhammad, he said it, nobody talk about him. Why? Because he is a criminal and his followers will kill you if you talk about it. And they want to put fear in your heart so you don't talk about it. And everybody shut up and nobody speak the truth. But those days is over, my friend. Today, everybody knows that Islam is nothing but a scam. 
Allah is the God of sex and vagina and penises. If I open the shelf of Allah in his library, what I will find? I will find a book about the vagina, a book about the penis, a book about the balls, a book about testicles, a book about stupidity and promises, which is not only impossible, but they are funny and disgusting. When Muhammad, he says to us, I was the most weak person between all mankind and sex until I invoke my God and he sent me a dish of shish kebab and I ate it and I get the power of 40 men. Trust me, I know a lot of men in the Middle East and I am from the Middle East. They eat shish kebab every day and still they have a problem with sexuality. I have a neighbor who used to buy drugs and he asked his friends when they go overseas to buy him Viagra because simply... He don't he's not doing good in in the bedroom I'm not making fun of him by the way this is illness it's not nothing nothing a big deal but he eats shish kebab all the time but only the shish kebab of Allah will make you powerful to the point you can do what 40 men cannot do isn't it obvious that Muhammad he is a perverted minded person to the point he is so much concentrated in sex what is sex for a prophet of God what is sex for God? Why it's so important? Heaven is about sex and drink and food. And at the end of the day is everything. It's just sex. Even Muhammad, if you remember the hadith, we mentioned it many times before, that in the heaven of Allah, uh, that there is a market, and this market have no buying, neither uh, uh, selling. Uh, and this selling or this market, you you buy nothing or you you sell nothing except pictures of images of men and women uh let me see if i uh, um, let us see the sukhan lafihi bayan wal shira all right all right read with me carefully what is in heaven of islam Indeed, in paradise, there is a market. Remember, the cult here is a marketing company. There is a market there. It's a company. Here it says, this is a company. This is a business, my friend. But involves sexuality and sex and abduction and sex slavery and human trafficking. So in the heaven of Allah, there is a market. And this market, there is no buying nor selling except for images of men and women. And any man, he like an image, he enter it and he have sex with it. Did you ask yourself what kind of a prophet this prophet is and what kind of God this God who opened a mall or a bazaar or a ship shopping center and this shopping center there's nothing but images of a playboy of women and men male and female I mean male and female in the heaven of Allah as images and those images they you know they provide us with uh, 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 let us say a guideline to find our sexual desire and men they will have sex with men by the way the Muslim they will say to you that this hadith is da'if for those who do not know the if hadith is accepted is not rejected when the Muslim they say da'if it's mean the hadith had a rank and it is okay da'if mean weak it mean it's mean it is okay it's not bad otherwise it's going to be inside the book this is the book in front of us. Let us show the reference. This is the book, as you see, and this is the hadith. And this is from Jami' al Turmudi. It says that if a man desire an image, he enter it. I mean, how perverted this God and this prophet. So you are the customer. You are who? The man. There's no women customers. But if a man ha like a man, the man is going to have sex with the man. And the Muslims agree that in the heaven of Allah, there is no limitation of sex. To the point even you can have sex with your sister. Everything is forbidden for you in earth is halal in the heaven of Allah. And those cults, the one we are speaking about today, they have no limitation. They speak too much of ethic. But they have no ethic they speak too much about empowering a human being but the fact they destroy your life 
in Islam, you go and commit suicide bombing, which means you destroy your life and the life of others and destroy civilization. Because, you know, when I explored myself, what I did, I killed whoever walking by, children, women, old people, and destroy whatever bus, school, building. It doesn't matter. I am nothing but a tool of destruction. So I die, you die, they die, and we destroy and we burn. And then supposedly, because you did that, Allah will send you to that market. And that market is full of images of very beautiful women and very good looking men. And if you are a Abdul and you like to have sex with men, all what you need to do is to choose, to choose an image of a man and go ahead. Take off your panty. That is Islam. This is why, this is why I find that there's a lot of similarity between Islam and those cults. The devil changed his face, changed his name, changed his flag, changed his color, changed his religion. He changed outside, but from outside, he is the same person. So he come to you as Muhammad, claiming to be prophet. He come to you as a founder of this cult. He come to you as even a Christian bishop or a priest who is a child molester. He can come to you as a person who tried to save a humanity. But the fact, he is destruction itself. So my message to everybody that we have to be careful and we have to be smart. And do read what the Messiah, our Lord, warned us. You have to be vigilant. You have to be careful. There's many wolves around us. And the wolves are waiting for you to be weak. So in order to, know, to fight your weakness, because weaknesses exist within you, same as a strength is exists within you. But sometimes we decide to let the weakness take over. And sometimes we decide that weakness have no place in our life. So you need to decide what do you want. And the only way I find that for me is to be overcoming weakness, I have to put rules in my life. And those rules is about, let us say, a warning system. Somebody want to bring me to better life. Why he promised me drugs? Why I cannot live better life without taking a cigarette from you? Why I cannot be happy without drinking wine and drinking whiskey and drinking like a crazy to the point I lose my mind? Why? You see, everything in life is a gift. But if we misuse, that will be an abuse. People, they drink alcohol until they became addicted to alcohol. People, they are addicted to sex. People are addicted to money. People are addicted to power. And this is all is Islam. So you might be not a Muslim, but you are a Muslim without knowing. In the heaven of Allah, what is there? River of wine. Thank you. You will be addicted to wine in the heaven of Allah. Endless number of women. Thank you very much. You will be slaves of your needs, drinking and women and gold and silver. He will not free you. That's why Jesus said in heaven, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. What Jesus meant is many Christians don't even understand what he meant. It's more deep than what is appearing to be. What is what it's mean? I will not get married. What does that mean? What does it mean that he and she, which means we both are equal in heaven, we are both equal and both of us, we are free. I will not need a female and the female will not need me. For both of us, we will be the same as angels, which means we are free of our needs. We will not be slaves of sickness, of tiredness. We will not be weak. We will not be uh, uh, sleepy. We will not be tired. We will not need food. We will not need money. We will be free. And people, they are missing the point that the most amazing thing gift can God give us is not to be in needs. You need to sleep, not because you like to sleep, but because you are tired. I wish I can stay 24 hours. You see, when you are 60 years old, do you know how many hours you slept? Oh, sorry, not how many hours, how many years? In 60 years of age, you slept already 20 years. 
so you can say literally you lived only 40 years out of 60 so do you know how much time you are killing during your lifetime a lot third of your lifetime is death when you are asleep you are dead I mean what you what the benefit of sleep nothing except your body needed so the Messiah he provide us a promise very high and it's about a freedom happiness which we never experienced before Islam is focusing in the belly and down your stomach will be full with wine and food and bird and shish kebab and your penis will be happy and will be long that is the most stupid promise which is not only disgusting it's very trashy and low class this is why I always I want people to remember that while Jesus goal is very high Islam goal is very low it is down the sewage when Jesus speaking about something extremely high like love your enemy Muhammad he speak about something very low like why are you are marrying a widow why you don't marry a child so he can sport with you he is trying to make the man divorce his wife who is he happy with her just because Muhammad he liked men to have sex with the children so there is many ways to find out if we are in danger and if there is somebody tried to corrupt us don't associate with the bad ones if you try to help them help them but don't associate don't live with them don't be one of them one bad apple can make it 25 apples bad however we as Christians we've been ordered to go and teach and preach so how we can go between the bad apples yet we will not be a bad apple that is a big challenge and the only way to do it is to be vigilant smart intelligent and to use the power of God which is provided to you and the wisdom of the Messiah which is written in the book which is between your hand don't just depend on yourself and your intelligence because the devil is very smart as you see those people who join this cult are very you know many of them they are very successful but many of them they are very desperate this woman she don't have a successful marriage this woman her husband cheating her this woman she have a boyfriend he, he broke with her everybody have his weakness and they get you when you are weak the same as a wolf for you know uh, uh, like following a cattle of buffalo do you know how po powerful the buffalo is yet the wolf can kill a buffalo because they attack the weak one the sick one the young one the one who cannot fight back this is why in order to fight back the devil you need to educate yourself not to be a naive person who anyone can lie to you and anyone can fool you God is not going to be given to you the gift of God because you make a donation if somebody says to you make a donation now call us now nine one eight hundred blah 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 nine nine seven eight two whatever call us right now and get the blessing of God they are scamming you what the blessing of God have to do with the donation since when you can bribe God nothing wrong with giving donation for those who deserve it if you think they need it but if you donate to me I'm not going to give you heaven who said that people who promise you heaven because you give money obviously they are scam people who promise you sex as a reward obviously they are not good people who promise you something is not doesn't sound right obviously it's not right we have to be smart otherwise many they will take advantage of us and educate your children and show them that what, what what's happening in this world don't hide things from them and do as the ostrich does put your head in the sand and says this is will not happen to me Oh, you know what? My children are smart. They will not be fooled by Muslims and converters. Now, my friend, there's many. They are converted because you, their family did not tell them. I remember the story of the, the Australian family who suddenly 
uh, their their son went missing and then somebody sent him a video saying that we saw your son doing suicide bombing in Syria a child who is not even 16 joined Islam and they sent him to Syria suicide committing suicide bombing killing many innocent and killing himself to join heaven it is the fault of who he's a child it is the fault of the stupid family who don't want to listen that the world is full of danger your son is associating with Muslims are you ready do you know what they will say to your son do you know how they play the game of converting people that Islam is the most fantastic religion and Islam is the only true religion and Islam mean peace this is in the beginning after you join them you are one of them and then the brainwash will start it is the cult of the devil and those who don't want to warn their children they might pay a very high price because one day my your son or your daughter might come to you and says dad I want to become a Muslim it's going to be too late for you now to convince him why because you are an idiot and you thought it's not going to happen to you it's the same as somebody want to have sex with all the girls in the town but yet he think that AIDS will not come to him and there is in this earth many people are like this and then now there's many stupid people in this earth they believe Islam is a peaceful religion why because famous leaders they say it so nobody want to say the truth if you if you if you look look in the news right now you will see all the news focusing in russia and trump russia and trump as this is the only problem in the world why because they want you to forget about islam and the threat of islam russia is a threat and then now if you watch fox news and cnn like Fox News now a little bit changing, but for centuries, if let us say tens of not centuries, ten, tens of years, always in the news they try to present to you the Russian as the communist. But the Russian are not communist no more. There's billionaires in Russia, you cannot even count their numbers. But yet they speak about them as communist. Churches open wide in Russia, but yet they speak about them as people of Stalin. Why we need to go in war with Russia? Because they want you to forget about Islam. They want to forget about the tie of Hillary Clinton and Obama and the corruption and everything. And they want you to focus to put the light in something is not important. And they are forcing Trump to be in a fight with the Russian. So we need to forget what is important and we focus in something stupid in the news. And the stupid in the news is that Russia is a threat to the American and if you watch the news you will think that those people they want you to go in war with the Russian but can we go in war in the Russian trust me if the American go in war with Russia America will disappear in less than 24 hours and obviously the Russian would disappear too so what this is about it's about stupidity when Trump he says make a threat to nuclear war when the guy he go and shake hands with him they say look at this guy he is an idiot he shake hands with the dictator so what do you want when he go for peace you attack him when he threat for war you attack him it doesn't matter what he do you will attack him so the point is not what he is doing the point is that whatever he do we hate you and this is exactly what they do to christianity jesus never killed anyone but they hate him Jesus never threatened anyone but they hate him Jesus never said anything wrong I mean what show me one thing Jesus said is wrong to make any of those left-minded people hate him nothing but yet they hate him because he made them feel filthy in the Middle East when a woman she is a whore she starts spreading rumors about everybody in the building all the neighbors why because she want to make herself feel better that she is not the only whore she start making lies about the neighbors and every woman in around because now i am not the only one is doing this business but this is a lie she is the one and the rest are just she lied about them 
So now they are focusing on things is not important. And this is exactly what happened in your life. You open your TV stations, they speak about everything except the important thing. An actor, he have a diarrhea. I mean, who in the world care about shit happening in the bathroom for an actor? An actor, she bought a purse for 14,000. I have a bill for the internet to pay. Who's going to pay for it? They try to make you focus and things is not important. And this is the method of the devil. He tried to put a light spot in something not important and make you believe that this is where your happiness. But the fact this is where your death. You are worried about how you will look like, but you are not worried about how you see yourself. You are worried about how people will see you, but you are not worried if you are happy with yourself, how you look like or not, if you are satisfied with yourself or not. You are not worried about, you don't have education, and you are an idiot of the village, but you are worried about not wearing the right jeans, or short, or t-shirt, or suit, you are worried about things which will not make you a better human being. But you are worried about things will make you no one. Everybody can buy clothes. Everybody can take off his clothes. Everybody can put makeup. Everybody can make a plastic surgery. But not everybody can be smart. And not everybody can be knowledgeable. And not everybody can be something to be remembered unless he work hard for it. So we better be careful. Either we are going to be six slaves, members of the cult of Muhammad or this guy, who always they try to provide themselves to us or present themselves to us as decent, ethical, very nice people. We are a human who empower a human. We are people who provide ethic and ethical word. We are all those organization who try to make them they are defending women rights they are the most people who abuse right or the right of women they are making articles trying to teach women that if you if you will be equal to the man if you grow hair under your arm imagine how stupid that is i mean what this have to do with empowering you please grow mustache i mean what that this is stupid Stupidity in these days is intelligence. Madness is degree. If you are a stupid and you have madness, that's when you have a PhD in intelligence these days. They always try to fool you. Women today, they've been told that if you have a big breast, you are beautiful. So make a surgery and the balloons is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And suddenly you have a cancer and you spend a lot of money and you are never satisfied because you forgot that you cannot fight time and you will die and you will be old. You like it or you don't. So this keep spreading their, or let us say, uh, working in their skin to the point their belly bomb became under their nose. So we extend it, we extend it, we extend it, and then we want to stay young. And why? Because the whole world believe that if, if I am young, I am good. They make you a foolish person. You spend your life spending your money to accomplish nothing. Even your face is not your face no more. So let us be smart people who focus in what is important. What is going to make me a different person? Education, education, education is what every human being first he need before anything. If you have knowledge, my friend, your life will change. You can be something. You can be successful. You can make money. You can be powerful. You can be protected because all bad things happen to us for very simple reason, because we are ignorant. People die because of cancer, not because cancer is very powerful, but because we do not know how to deal with it. People used to die because of a flu, not because a flu is something very scary, but because we don't know how to stop the flu. So how we can stop the flu in our life, which is having many faces these days. How we can stop cults and people to brainwash our children's, it's education. So I advise everybody 
to read, educate yourself, even books which is supposedly bad. Nothing wrong with reading what about the bad, because how you will learn about the bad if you don't know what is the bad is. How you will learn that you know uh, uh, AIDS is exist and how to protect yourself from it unless you know what it is. How you can fight an enemy you do not know. And this is why we are teaching about Islam. Islam, I don't hate Muslims, and I don't want to be an enemy to any Muslim. But Islam is the enemy of all mankind. Islam is a cult which is a threat for humanity and peace and economy. Since 9-11, people start thinking about what Islam is about. But Islam was a threat always. 9-11 is just a wake-up call to the stupid Western who they were in bed sleeping with the devil and they have no idea. The Western, specifically the American, they sponsor Islam for a long time. They sponsor the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. They sponsor the Mujahideen in Sarajevo. They killed ten of thousands of Serbian in Serbia, fighting side by side with the filthy terrorist. And this is the truth. It is America who taught the terrorists in Afghanistan how to do suicide bombing and how to do bombs in the street. You seek partner with the devil. You are the devil. It's time for us to wake up because you might think that the devil, he will help you some days or for some time. But at the end of the day, the devil is a devil. I remember uh, Trump, he made a, uh, or he caught uh, poetry about a snake, about a woman. She took a snake and then the snake she bought, she bite the women. And then the snake she told the women, if yes, you know I am a snake. You know I am a snake when you took me inside your home. Why you took me? And that is what Muhammad is about. We want to help the Muslims to have a better life. We want them to be happy. We want them to live as a human. We don't want anyone to be killed. We don't want Muslims to be slaughtered. We don't want to see Muslims dying. I feel sorry for Muslims dying in Syria right now because they are killing each other. Every day, there is a suicide bombing somewhere. Very sad. Why? Because if a filthy cult leader, his name is Muhammad, convince people that if you die for me I will give you a long penis and I will give you endless number of women bracelet of gold in your hand silver and glister clear cup full of wine mixed with ginger and little boys who they are naked going around you to serve you stupidity is our problem is not food is not energy is not even drought, is not even rain. It is a stupidity. I want to say thank you guys for listening. May the Lord bless you all. I will try to do broadcast. If not tomorrow, maybe the day after. Just subscribe and keep in touch. And those who like to help us in what we do, feel free to make a donation if you like. And by the way, your donation will not take you to heaven if you donate to me, but your donation can help more people to hear about what we do and we save more people to learn the truth. And if you like to learn more about Islam, feel free to go to Amazon.com and search for Christian Prince, and then you will uh, see the list of my books. And by the way, not only, not necessarily in Amazon.com, you can search in Amazon.de, Germany, France, etc. I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again.